Hi everyone. This is episode 158, right? Yeah. Of the Procross Anime. We are doing very well here. Uh and we're starting a new season, the spring 2023 season. And as a tradition, we we uh we pick like 10 shows and uh we run them down, uh talk about them basically, and um uh, uh we're gonna rank them. And hopefully we 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 can pick like three uh three to four shows that uh, we're gonna watch to the end. I'm gonna aim for three rather than four. Okay. Trying to save yep. some shows for uh for my end of the year marathon when I catch mm-hmm. up on everything. Yep. And That's... you know, I we may not even get to four, like in terms of shows that we both agree are really good. <laughs> uh, because this I, season was not as impressive as I hoped it would be. I mean, it has some clear winners, in my opinion, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not just victories everywhere you look. I I agree. I have my clear favorite as well, and um, for me, for me, it did two shows that uh that stand above the rest. Yeah, same. All right, maybe maybe it is uh, same two show, but we're gonna find out soon. Yeah. And uh, we uh we propose uh purposely left Oshinoko because it's like an hour and twenty minute premiere, and uh so we we replace the other show is, instead uh that that the other show is Blue Orchestra or Ao No Orchestra. Yeah, I haven't even seen the first episode of Oshinoko. I'm I will eventually, you know, because it's mm-hmm. a big ticket anime of the season. But I, to be honest, I'm really not that. Like, I don't care that much. I read the first uh, couple chapters of the manga, and I was like, what is this shit? I, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, so where, where, where did you end up with in the manga? Um, I guess spoilers for Oshinoko. Uh, it's uh-huh. after he's reborn as her daughter. All right. Her son. Yep. Because... Uh spoilers uh just a very much spoiler is um the first episode when or went through all that and go up to their being a teenagers right yeah the it time skips pretty fast in the manga up to them being teenagers okay yep so the whole thing is just a setup um, yeah and then the his he's got a twin sister mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who is um the one of his former patients mm-hmm. but they didn't know that uh, they didn't know that about themselves yet. Right. Oh, man. They don't know each other's identities. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, Despite they... being staying together for for 16 years. Well, the, I didn't read much of the stuff when they were teenagers when I previewed the manga. Um, right. Obviously, when they're babies, they can't communicate that information to each other. Um, and then, I don't know, that might be the sort of thing that... Well, thinking about it, like when they're kids... You know, when they're like three or four years old, or let's say, I don't know, six or seven, once you've gained the ability to communicate verbally, um, (laughs) you probably wouldn't have the filter necessary to like hold back on that sort of information. You'd be be like, yeah, "Yeah, so uh, I just I just remember being a grown up or in her case, not a grown up in her case, because she died when she was still a kid. Um, Yeah, well, Um, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, the way that the rebirth works in that series is like. Yeah, you, they have all the knowledge, and uh, they they. But actually, it's not just the knowledge; like you, you retain your maturity as well. Mm-hmm. Like yep. mentally, even when he's a baby, he's an adult, right? He yeah, thinks to himself, right. "Yeah." So, he definitely wouldn't reveal his his identity um, because he is an adult, and he would understand strategically. You probably shouldn't do that, or else you might get experimented on in a lab somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe she. The Ruby, I think, is the name of the the daughter. Yeah. Yep. Maybe when Ruby. she died um, prior to her reincarnation, she was also old enough to like reason to herself. I probably shouldn't tell anybody about this. I don't know. Yep. Yep. There, there's the there brief scenes in the, in the episode. She she talking herself about that. Like, I shouldn't tell my identity to to this guy because I don't want he uh he to think that I'm die a teenager or something like that. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, but uh, uh, enough about Oshinoko. We have like ten <laughs> more shows. <laughs> right, we got that all. 
So um, yeah, I agree with you that uh, this is a strong season, but not that strong. Like uh, there are many shows that I think are lesser. They uh, are not that good. Yeah, it's all but right. Just, there's there's a you know a couple, a few that are that are pretty good, and that's really that's good enough for me. You know. Yep, that's true. That's just what what ought to be normal. Yep. All right, let's get to the first show then. Um, alphabetically, that's going to be our no orchestra. So the right. replacement show. Yeah. I also read the first couple chapters of, of maybe three chapters of this. Oh. A few a few of these series, I read the source material for just a handful of chapters um, to preview what they would be like because I had to write up a little article about some of them. And yep. this was one of them. It, is there any relation though between this and uh, Blue Period or the other movie Blue uh, Symphony or something? Well, because they're I, obviously part of the Blue Anime Cinematic Universe. Right. You're talking about Blue Giant when you're referencing the movie, right? That's right. Yep. Yeah. What do you mean by the universe? So they are, you know, like in the same universe? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, just... I, was, I was just joking. I mean, there's a bunch of anime with owl no in the yeah or owl or owie you know what whatever mm -hmm. just blue in the title there's this there's there is blue giant there's Aoi Hana, which is sweet blue flowers there's um blue lock blue lock yeah owl <laughs> owl or owl haru ride yep 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 it's uh, like a shoujo thing blue spring blue ride Blue Spring Ride, I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I watched. I was. I watched that one. I mean, it makes sense that there would be. Don't don't Japanese people like not perceive much of a difference between the colors blue and green? What do you, What do you mean? Have you ever Have you ever heard that before? No. So it's apparently, this is like a real thing. Apparently, is that Japanese Japanese people. Like uh -huh. hereditarily, it's as part of their genetics, I guess. Don't see much of a difference between the colors blue and green. Like they they get them confused, wow. or they view them as kind of like the same color. Wow! Right? Huh? <laughs> I... <laughs> and they tend to default to blue rather than green when describing. Like obviously, they you know how grass in a lot of modern digital anime is like so green that it hurts your eyes. Yep. Yep, they obviously yep. know the difference between that and you know the color of the sky or the color of the ocean, yeah. But um, I don't know. There's yeah, there, that's a real thing, like biologically. It well, it actually very interesting because in in our in, in my language in Vietnamese language we say blue and green the same the same word. Yeah, it, maybe it's not just Jap a Japanese thing, but an East Asian thing. Yeah. And then we have we have we have to add like addition words like like the green green like leaf is the uh, is is the green, you know like blue like leaf. It's, blue it's, it's blue like, light leaf. Yeah, so so is is the blue color that look like leaf is the is the green, that's that basically the. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, yeah, and uh, and the other one is blue like sky. So. Huh. So I think it's very interesting, interesting the way that we think green and blue are some kind of the same. Yeah. Well, they're right next to each other on the color wheel. But yeah, but uh, but the thing is, I think blue it rep rep represent the, the youth. So that's why they 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 kind of uh, use blue as as a you know like as a color that represent you know like teenagers and coming up age. The, the you best. would think you would think that would be pink though. At least in Japan, because of mm -hmm. sakura blossoms. That, that that's right. Hmm. All well, right, whatever. But, yep. Let's talk about this show itself. Right. <laughs> uh, so this show is about a, a guy. So so it, it kind of reminds you of uh, your light in April about a guy who who play um uh violin and uh, he loved that so much. Uh, he practiced that with his father's but now the father is gone due, due to an affair and he hated his father and then he he just uh, vowed it not to play ever again right. until 
he hurt the cell from from the girl. Yes, until he meets a girl. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so 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 it it is the start of you know like uh, how he start to play again, and and now I think this time he play in in a band in a, in an orchestra. Do you think he's going to join the after school? I I, I do think so. Yes. Like when uh, well, he gets to high school eventually. I I think it's slowly at first. So so it's gonna be he he now teaching uh this girl um, Risuko or Ak- Akine, uh how to play properly, and then later on, yeah, he he gonna join the band. But there there will have to be some sort of time skip for that to happen, right? Because they're in middle school, yeah. and all the conversations mm-hmm. that he has with Takeda Sensei, the teacher. Um, yep. are about oh yeah well, i mean when you get to high school you can join uh you can join orchestra yep yep yep, yep. that's true i don't well, know like i didn't read far enough to see whether there's a time skip or not at least not early on mm-hmm. My, i hope i hope there is because it would be nice for this guy Alno, the main yep. character um whose name is a pun on the title of the series <laughs> it would be nice for him to grow up a little bit Right. Mm-hmm. Rather than being like super gloomy and thinking, like narrating his life to himself and thinking, the room was permeated with the smell of cigarettes and the sound of the violin. Like, <laughs> just, you know, like live your life a little bit, man, rather than getting so, uh, you rub, know, obsessive rub, about this stuff. Yeah. Rub up to the past. But, um, I, I think that, that, uh, his narration really that might be first episodes for me because you know like we hear he uh, like deep in thought most of the time and it is established that you know like because he lost the joy of playing violin he he, he also very uh, hollow just using the word from the other guy from the other souls that we're gonna talk next actually Jigo well. Kuraku Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I kind of, of, of see the reason why. Um. You know, like he he be in in that state. Uh. Is that make him a in, interesting? You know, like protagonist. Probably not. But you know, like there there's a reason behind behind his behavior. Yeah. I guess so. I mean, he was uh, really hurt by his father's affair and specifically what it did to his mother Mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. you know and as a result he's become moody and withdrawn and everything yeah talking about that though we actually don't don't uh don't see much about the mother like i i mean she's afraid of cockroaches yeah that's right but um yeah it's it's the effect that hurt her so much we we see that she gets she getting over that now but not but but not uh but not i don't know well, she's an adult. She has to like carry on with her life. That's true. He can he can just be grumpy all the time, and you know all of his food and clothing and education is is like given to him. Mm-hmm. He yeah he has a choice. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, the production wasn't that bad. Like I I actually really like the uh, the color palette and uh, the blue things. And uh, the blue and, and, things. What what was yeah, blue? I remember like uh, uh, many scenes where, you know, like it passed in blue, like in some some of some of the scene in the room. Or maybe I just I just remember other shows. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what you're referring to. Yeah, well. But I hmm. also don't remember much about how this show looks. All right. Which is probably a good thing. Because <laughs> if a, if a show really you know looks ugly, then I'll remember. And to be All honest, right. this one looked a little like I was expecting it to be just kind of disastrous, um, yeah. like way below average. That actually happened to another show um, in this group oh. of ten that I was expecting would be a little better, uh, but this one kind of exceeded my expectations a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, now I don't think it's particularly well made. I I wouldn't say that the animators or the you know the background artists, the art direction team. I wouldn't say any of them did a great job, mm-hmm. uh, except on the very first sequence where Auno is playing the violin. It's All like right. a flashback. Yep, yep, yep. 
uh, and he's, he's playing the violin. And the, the musical animation there is pretty good. Of course, it cuts to like static images of the crowd for like four seconds at a time. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Just a still image of people in the crowd being like, <gasps> with their mouths open. <laughs> That's kind of lame. But that yeah, that first scene is great. But apart from that, I mean, it looks fine. It looks okay. The layouts are the, the main issue that I have with the, the series. Mm -hmm. It feels really empty. Mm hmm Maybe that's for the purpose that you know, like this guy feeling empty as well. No, I don't. I, I don't mean, know. It's improved though. It's, it's it feels empty in the way that uh, a show feels empty when you like don't have time to populate it with other characters or with with uh, you know crowds or mm -hmm. just bodies stuff in general. Mm -hmm. it looks empty in the way that a show that is underfunded looks it's not a it's not the sort of emptiness that you get from like sangatsu no lion for example mm -hmm. yeah i i guess i i, I see what you mean but it, yeah but it's it's not horrible you know <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it's not terrible and i was expecting it to be terrible so you know <laughs> it's good i guess that i that i was wrong <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah and and i i think we just get to the start of it so uh we we don't see much about the girl uh for instance and uh yeah i i would suspect that they're gonna be a uh the major event gonna be when he when he on them uh joined the high school and uh and maybe join the band or just playing some some music together yeah the, there's a poster for the show um that has like four like maybe four or five characters sitting around on folding chairs in a circle yep um and they've got their instruments out if i remember correctly yep. that really doesn't give me the vibe i mean well it, it that could be anything you know they could just have the characters arranged in that particular way because i don't know that's what the poster designer wanted but just that image really doesn't make me think, oh, yeah, this is going to be a no. show about a, a guy in an orchestra. Yeah, the thing is, um, uh, they wear different uniforms as well. So the uniform that they wear in, um, in, in middle school is, you know, like the creating, the, the, uh, and this one is like more blue. So I, oh. I, I probably think that this is high school. Okay, cool. I didn't notice that. Well, that's good. Yeah, I just I just played like the clip again just to see if they if they wear the same uniform they or not. All right, very nice, well spotted. Yeah, I mean that makes me more interested. I'm not sure I'm gonna watch any more of this, but uh, the fact that the time skip is coming, you know, probably like relatively soon, I would guess. Yeah, ma does make me a little more interested in it. All right, so I wonder. Um, I would what place that you put up for our orchestra mm, I because wonder. <laughs> because i put it third okay for me it was number eight wow right we might have like some very different opinion then <laughs> <laughs> uh, i we might on, on a couple shows but i think in general we'll agree all right let's <laughs> i mean the two best shows are just so obvious is it is it to the audience let's see well if you know if they've got any self-respect as anime fans then yeah it's probably obvious to them as well <laughs> uh the next show that we're gonna talk about is ziko kuraku or hell's paradise right yeah this it is does... the show this is the shonen jump is this shonen jump or is this jump plus right i think this jump. is jump plus it just it's, jump plus. It just like a new, a, a new thing of Shonen uh, uh, Jump. Yeah, it's just another one of their magazines. And right. since Shonen Jump is so famous, they just kept the word "jump" in it. All right. <laughs> yeah, but this—I mean, the other one is Mashle, which I don't think we're. Yeah, we're not previewing. Um, but Jigokuraku is also, you know, widely read, being being a Jump Plus manga. Hmm. And this episode doesn't exactly make it clear why, because it's it's all just prologue, 
you know, we they haven't gotten yep. to the island yet. And the island yep. is I, where I assume the bulk of the story takes place and all the action is. And we meet all the other characters from the OP. Yep. Um, so the fact that this was just a, just a prologue and very like, kind of like information driven, it's kind of a bummer. Well, uh, it actually gives you a bit more context about our main characters. A hollow guy, a guy who, you know, have no will to live, but uh, he cannot die. And uh, we get to see a bit more of him and a bit more of, of the, the the girl as well, who yeah. I, I don't even know what her real job is. She, she, she is at first a reporter. So, you know, like I do my job, I just write, and then it turned out that she's an executor, so she about to kill him, and then it turned out that she's, she advised him to, uh, to, to go to that island. So what? is she exactly she's she is an executioner right yep she like she comes from a, a family in the same way that gabimaru comes from um iwagakure hey. which is like yep. a ninja village um sagiri is part of the As asaiman family and they like serve the the shogun as blade testers and executioners so that right. is her real job but now she's going to be accompanying this guy to the island, which is called, I think, Shin, Shin Senkyo, which yep. means like new. Well, Shin means new. I don't remember what Senkyo means, but she's going to go with him to the island and they're going to become like a pair, I guess. They're going to be partners. And I assume that many of the other characters who will meet on the island are going to be in similar situations because yep. everyone who's being sent there under like the Shogun's decree, they're all criminals who are sentenced to death. Yep. And so I assume it's going to be kind of, you know, how a lot of shonen anime are kind of systematic in the way that they pair characters together. Like they have very mm -hmm. defined roles. Yep. Um, I, I assume that all the pairs of characters who will meet on the island are going to be one death row criminal and one like government loyalist who is accompanying them. Like their handler. Right. I, I, I thought at first, uh, based on what she, uh, she described to him, is that she going to have like a group of criminals. So, so she's the, like one of the few yet. And then the, the, the group of criminals just go, go by boat to, uh, to the island. But that makes it, this, that, this makes sense as well. Like we have like, uh, a duo, uh, one from the criminal and one from the, um, um, uh, the, the, the government to right. um to go through that that's and, just my that's my guess yeah and uh the uh the island that they describe it actually very very in intriguing as well so people go there and they break, then when they go back they are you know like they are part of the flowers they being in, in created to of flowers right so their body transformed to the to to, to that of the flowers yeah it's kind of like they've become part of the island and uh some of the coughs is like you know like they they are still smiling so you know it, it it's, it's very creepy when you think about it right well that's kind of a yeah like i said earlier it's kind of a shame that this episode's so different from what's going to come later at least like in terms of us judging this series and setting our expectations for it based on this first episode. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't think this, what we just saw is going to resemble much of what we see from episode two onwards, maybe yeah, but... episode two actually. Cause she's like, okay, well first we need to stop in Edo before we mm -hmm. go to the Island. And the main guy, Gabi Maru is like, what, why do we have to do that? I don't want to do that. Let's just, let's just go straight to the Island. So maybe mm -hmm. episode two will be them like meeting some of the other characters in Edo before they set off for the island. Yep. But from that point on, I think the show is going to look very different. It's going to, it's going to, you know, operate very differently as well. Yeah. But uh, this episode, it also established like how awesome uh, Gabi Maru is, or e even like the, uh, the, the superpower that the, uh, that universe has. So like this guy, uh, they tried to ex execute him several times. If, uh, like they really were, they, they tried to chop his head off, but you know, like the, the plate just, you know, like coming undone, hitting his, his, uh, his neck. So it just, you know, like this guy, he really is strong. Yeah. To, to a supernatural <laughs> level. Right. That's cause he was born and bred in Iwagakure. Um, 
and they that's where all the ninja come from i guess yeah their yep. superpowers right off the bat there he even has like a special move with the name you know a lot of shonen <laughs> anime have like the yep. characters will have names for all their moves it's like called ascetic blaze or something yep. we don't actually see it we don't see what it entails because the show cuts away and then when it cuts back it's him sitting on top of like a mountain of all the dudes who are in that little room that yep. underground room and he's on he's sitting on top of them and it, you know they're on fire or it's, like the, it's the a, embers of whatever fire move he's just used are like yep. their clothing is still a little bit on fire <laughs> yeah well it's it's a bit cutting the corner for me but well <laughs> yeah i think the idea is you keep it a secret for now so that when he's, when he actually busts it out on the island for the first time uh -huh. you're like whoa that's what yep. that was yep so I, I that i don't i don't really mind not seeing it in this context but mm -hmm. the the episode did feel kind of like a little chopped up you know because the narrator kept interjecting and being like ah yes so, so here's another one of the execution methods they used back in the old days and did you know that a human being's legs can support 500 kilograms of yep. they can resist 500 kilograms of uh like opposing force yep uh stuff is that, like that yeah 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 uh <laughs> chop up hey <laughs> yes yeah the, well it, it did feel the the main way in which the oh i see <laughs> the main way in which it felt chopped up was the jumping what once uh she was like you actually loved your wife didn't you and he was like no my secret uh then it started like flashing back to him um you know kind of being in a more domestic relationship with his wife or at least her trying to get him accustomed to that yep and be I, like hey we're actually I, gonna be a husband and a wife now that we're married and he <laughs> He's like completely I, I, baffled by this. Yep, yeah, I actually um kind of like uh his wife design. I actually feel that the the show design is really strong, like uh distinctive for like all the characters. Uh, I I don't know if I want to see more of her though because she's you know like appearing. Uh, in this story, gonna be a a massive uh nuisance to um. Uh, uh, to Gabi Maru and uh, and and the girl because they have to protect uh, the the wife. Well, what if I mean she was born in this ninja village? What if she has powers too? That interest. That interesting. Yeah. I mean, he yeah, could does. Be. He does say that like in Iwagakure, male and female roles are like tightly, strictly defined. Mm -hmm. um, men are supposed to be like the ultimate ninja warriors and women are supposed to make babies. Yep, um, yep, yep. But I, I have to imagine that Kunoichi like female ninja probably exist in mm -hmm. this time period. Yeah. I don't know. Yep. Hmm. Interesting. So yeah, uh, this episode, we just learn a bit about the context and we learn about these two characters. So I, I, I think that as a, uh, like you said, it's it's not a representative of what to come, but um, as a uh, as an episode that gonna pick your interest to you know like to 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 want to know more. I think it it actually does does the job. Yeah, it's all right. I'm probably gonna watch more. Yep, yep. I I think I'm gonna watch more as well. So I put it six out of ten. So did I. Huh. All right. All right, the next one is Kimiwa Hokago Insomnia or in Insomniacs After School. Yeah. Oh, already yawning when we're talking about the, uh, <laughs> the show about sleep. Yeah, so about the uh, people who cannot sleep at night. <laughs> right. They can only sleep in the their observatory, their school's uh, astronomy observatory. Yep. And one of them can particularly only sleep when she's with this other guy. No. Yep. Yep. That's right. I mean, the not really, because when we're introduced to her, she is already asleep. Um, mm -hmm. But that, like the show kind of points towards that, is that she feels more comfortable um, when she's sleeping with somebody else. I guess it's easier for her to drift off. Or, or, or maybe just with just this guy, because, you know, like... Um... At the later scene in the episode, uh, when they try to hide from the police, 
She actually sno- snooze up a bit. She, what do you mean snooze up? Like she starts to get a little bit drowsy? Yeah, yeah. She actually, you know, like just, just go a bit of a sleep, like a, a very quick uh, nap before, you know, like Yanta bring her back to, uh, uh, to awake. Oh, huh. Yep. I mean, I kind of remember that scene and I remember like her like leaning up against him and then yep, the, yep, yep. there's a cut to, or I guess there's a transition to the the line art of the, the two characters with like the background of the starry sky. Yep, 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 yep. So perhaps like his circadian rhythm and hers are a match and that's why it's easier for her to fall asleep whenever he's around. I don't know. Basically, yeah, the I, point is that they're going to fall in love, and so <laughs> she's, you know, she feels more comfortable sleeping with him around because they're going to fall in love, and they're the main characters. Yeah. So uh, the gist of the story uh, for this for episode is that uh, we we see this guy, uh, the name is Kianta, who cannot sleep at night, so, you know, like in... Uh, in school, he just you know like feel very drowsy. Uh, he's can he he just doesn't want he 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 cranky as well. Uh, he just doesn't want, doesn't want to do anything. So um, <clears throat> after he uh, he gets sent to the uh, uh, to the lab, uh, the the ob- the observatory uh, to to get some stuff. See if uh he f- he he f- he found a girl there sleeping, and. Um, yeah, and then and, and they just they just learn that, you know, like they, they get the same condition who you know like who cannot sleep at night. And uh, they got um they got locked up as well. <laughs> God. That's a story. And um and yeah, what we like, think that's like a porn plot. <laughs> oh no, I got locked in a room with a girl. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, listen listen to that, to, to this. Uh and then when um when he uh he takes when they're waiting for his friend to come rescue, uh, rescue them, they sleep together. Right. Side uh, by side. Side by side. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, I, I, I just want to compare this to Call of the Night because Call of the Night, like at the very first moment, we see uh, the boy, you know, like just roaming the street at night. Uh, this one, we, we basically start uh in the daylight and we only go to you know the, the night time like the last five episodes i oh, sorry the last five minutes yeah they're kind of similar but call of the night has a style to it that the show definitely does not have yep that that is true the show is very very plain looking this one is more you know like more focused on the uh uh that relationship between these the two uh the two persons yeah, well, I guess. I mean, the Call of the Night was all about the relationship between the two main characters as well. In yeah, fact, he didn't even yep. go to school. So, yeah, we we don't we, see him at school at all. We, we see yeah. like so his number one relationship was with the vampire girl. Yep, yep. And um, this so also remind me a bit of um, uh, "Let Me Eat Your Pancreas," you know. <laughs> In in a way that uh we have like a more hyper girl, and a boy who gets sucked into you know like whatever her activities, and the girl is uh is hinted to be a a, a sick girl as well. So I'm I'm afraid that you know like if they're gonna go this route for for the show, this is gonna be really bad, very melodramatic. Uh, yeah, you're talking about the fact that she has, when she was born, she had a, like a frail body, right? Yeah. That's yep, yep, yep. that she had to do like gymnastics and swimming and stuff in order yep. to, um, uh, you know, strengthen yep. herself. Mm-hmm. All that is, um, revealed during their first kind of night crawling trip around the city. Yep. 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 Uh, yeah. I mean, I would assume that because the author decided to include that information so early in the game that it will eventually recur in the form of like a dramatic illness. Uh, uh, but that doesn't necessarily have to happen for a long time. Uh, 
All right. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm glad that you feel a bit, you know, like you, you don't mind about the fact because, you know, like the moment that she, she mentioned that she have a frail body, I, I just think, no, don't go that route. Don't, you know, like don't go dying on, on us. <laughs> I doubt she's going to die. <laughs> well, you know, in, 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 um, in pancreas, that girl dies and, and she not die because of the illness. Yeah. But this is a completely different thing, you know. This is a TV show, so in a movie, you can, you know, you can head towards a destination of a character dying. It's no problem. Movie's gonna, movie's gotta end. A TV show has many episodes. You can't be like, oh, this, you know, th this is probably gonna be what twelve, thirteen episodes. Mm -hmm. You yeah, can't be fun. like, oh, well, she's gonna die real soon because <laughs> there's more episodes to make. <laughs> yeah. As far as their relationship, how 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 do you buy it? Buying it? It's uh, this no no. <laughs> I I think they did share like a a very special bond because you know like they both you know like struggle to sleep at night, and and they have that play for themselves as well. So I I think this is kind of like a legit a legit bond between them. Don't you think? No. I mean, he, he's sent to this place in order to get some cardboard boxes. Oh, look what I found. A love interest. <laughs> That's kind of true. And, and, and the way that she, uh, she, she was sleeping inside, you know, like that thing, I think it's like a coffin. It, it, it looked like, you know, like she a vampire, you know? Yeah, it's like a Sleeping Beauty type of thing. Yeah, that's true. She's there in her little... Uh, what is it that Sleeping Beauty slept in? Was it like a glass box or something? Oh, I, I, I thought that it was just a just a bed, but maybe a glass box. Yeah, I thought it was something like unique or distinctive that Sleeping Beauty slept in before she was awoken by Prince Charming. But that's the same general idea here. Is she's sleeping in a some kind of enclosure. Yep. 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 And he stumbles he stumbles upon her. Yep. It's just very you know, it's very uh manic pixie dream girl ish which is well, not something that i am automatically opposed to you know i kind of like i like when uh you know one member one part of a, of a romantic relationship is like a little more strange or offbeat or you know marches to their the beat of their own drum and the other one is less like that and then they you know that creates a little bit of interest you know a little bit of fluctuation uh in in the telling of the story about their relationship, but here it's just, it's just so like automatic. It's, mm -hmm. we just, the show's just like, but this is the premise. He finds a girl. The animation is not, you know, it, the animation's not like keeping it propped up because mm -hmm. it's, it's not good, man. All right. Um, it's it's funny because I'm gonna use that term, the manic PC dream girl, to one one of the other show that we're gonna talk. So, yeah, I, I mean, I know I know which one it would be. Yeah. Well, well, well. So, um, yeah. Uh, what number that you put for this one? Seventh. I put it four. Yeah. Seven. Hmm. Interesting. All right, the next one is a sequels mix. Right. Season two. Yeah, I'm, uh, I was surprised when this was announced because I just thought they were going to end it after one season. Oh. You know? Well, at least we get more we get more out of energy adaptation, so I, I, I'm, I'm not complaining. And I think he's still you know, popular enough for... Uh, for it guarantee to have a a a second season. Well, mm. guarantee. I mean, H two didn't get a second season. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so guarantee is kind of a. It's a yeah. tough thing to It's a tough thing to come by guarantees in mm -hmm. uh, in anime. You know, unless it's like Attack yeah. on Titan level stuff. But the thing is, uh, even even H two is uh is had like forty eight episode, right? It's forty one, but it 41. doesn't. You know, it doesn't even it doesn't even get halfway through the manga. Huh. Yep. Yeah. And uh, uh, I mean, yes, he's Arachi is still he's thought of as like one of the gods of manga. 
or at least one of the gods of like sports manga or slice of life Baseball. or yeah yeah you know like teen drama ish type stuff yep and uh uh the first episode is kind of like just uh reintroduce uh the characters and uh yeah yeah basically if you don't remember much about the first season i think uh they have a pretty good job remind you of all the characters and you know like uh what happened before and and where 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 they are now yeah it introduces the characters in the same way as well yeah. like visually the same style is used it's it freeze frames on one of the characters and then their little their picture kind of like slides over to the left hand side of the screen and then the name cards pops up on the right hand side of the screen <laughs> and you even have noriko hiraka uh doing the narration and introducing uh all the characters and reminding you of the events of the first season as well she was the one who voiced mirami in touch oh so okay It's uh, they. I mean, the same. It was the same in Mix's first season too. It was the same voice actress. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it's a big nostalgia bomb. And I think you know how like all of uh, Adachi's titles, like Touch, H Two, Cross Game, Mix, they're they're all like they're only loosely related to the the events or the the premise of. Yep. Of those, like for example. Um, H2 is named H2 because all four of the main characters, their names start with H. Their yep. first names start with H. Mm -hmm. And in Cross Game, I think the idea is that um, Alba like is playing on a boy's team as a girl. So she's like crossing over. Yeah, Just, but they're, uh, they're only like tangentially related to yeah. the stories. Yeah, I, I was about to say that uh, you could apply mix for Cross Game. If 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 that's you know like the the intention of um, uh, of her joining in the can play in the in the main games mix, yeah. Well, you it yeah. It's that's the thing. It's like so vague. The titles are vague enough that you they could be anything really. Yep. And it would yeah, still kind of apply. But I think I figured out what mix is because I saw a comment somewhere online saying that uh, the owner of the ramen dragon, uh huh, um, which is where. Haruka works, right? Yep, yep, yep. That apparently he is a character from like Miyuki, another one of Adachi's All right. series. Yep. So there are characters from Touch. There are new characters from Mix, obviously, um, and there are characters from Miyuki as well. So maybe that maybe Mix means that you know there's characters from multi, many of his works, kind of mixed oh. together. All right. Remember, I. An um an event I don't even remember like which show we watched for that one, where they have like a neighbors that that are robbers, and they are on the run. That's in touch. That in touch, and yeah. uh and, and 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 we said that uh they they come from an another show of his as well or another manga of his. Did we just speculate that, or did we know, did I I mean I didn't <laughs> know that for sure. All right, um, all right. That may have been speculation. Did you did you ever like no. look that up and figure it out for yourself? No, I I I, I don't even recall their their faces and and the, but but I I I'm keen to look that up just to see if they are from another character because it's like really weirdly uh place in yeah in that context, but um yeah that might be true. Um, I I I think mix here. It just it just a I think where they they put like to uh yeah it is in the very premise of you know like this uh this is like a mix of a new family where a widow husband and a widow uh wife uh get together and they have like a mix of you know like children yeah and that does two, make way more sense <laughs> yeah and the two of them is actually uh had the same birthday I think. So uh, Shochiro and Toma, uh, they have a same birthday and they are not blood related. Right. It's like they're twins because they're the exact same age, same birthday. Yep. Yep. But they're not and, actually. And they they also hint about uh, a romance between uh, Toma and Otomi, which you know they are step brothers. And they're sisters. step siblings. Yep. 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 Right. With the value. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. 
Hadachi likes that sort of thing. <laughs> I think that's uh, come up in more than one of his works. Yep. Maybe in Miyuki? Miyuki. Possibly. I've never I've never read Miyuki or seen I it got a TV series. A bunch he's had more than just the four TV series that people know him for. There's been like other yep. series, there's yep. been OVAs. Yep. Um etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Yep, he had um Miyuki. That, uh he also has the um uh the one where um they are in the boarding school or, or they are just not not the boarding school, they are in the uh, it, it's like uh uh, an apartment building yeah yeah that's right uh Sunny Ryoko yeah that's, yeah that's, that's the name and then they have like slow step which I don't know is about baseball or other sport I can't remember yeah uh, just a whole bunch more of stuff so yeah he's famous um yeah in fact this... he's but he he's not content with just being famous because in mix he actually tried to draw a new character for the first time in 40 years and it uh, didn't go so guy. well <laughs> <laughs> a beat up guy yeah nishiki who is like some sort of delinquent apparently yep well, and he has a face like a zombie yep that got but, but hit the... with a with a gigantic sledgehammer and now his face is kind of like pancaked it's just very <laughs> weird looking <laughs> Yeah, but the thing is, when when we heard about the sto- a story of him, you know, like hitting up the uh, the senpais, and uh, get expelled for that, uh, I just think that you know, like, uh, Adagi has had to use this this shot off uh, setup before. Yeah, yeah, one of the characters in Cross Game did that too. Yeah, the the main the characters, the main character Kochiro, I think, Coat. Uh, no, not him. One of his friends. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's right. That's right. Uh, okay. Yep. So I I would expect that's gonna be the same with this guy. I I hope that I I I am wrong out because you know, well, uh, if he a delinquent but he you know has skill and he want to play baseball, why not? Yeah, I'm I'm so, sure that that's that it'll be the same as it was in cross game, and <laughs> he'll join the baseball team. <laughs> And he become a great addition to, yeah. to the team. I'm sure, yeah. The, I mean, there's no reason to doubt that that will happen because this uh, this man is nothing if not predictable. <laughs> yeah. And, and and we just want to see more, see more of that happen, you know. And uh, especially, uh, you know, like the interaction between the four main characters, which I, yeah, I, I, I really looking forward to. Yeah, me too. I mean, it's just more mix. I don't. This episode didn't really offer a lot of new stuff for us to chew on. It's just kind of an yeah. announcement that the show is back, and you know, looks pretty much the same as it did before, and feels pretty much the same as it did before. Right. And it's and... gonna be real slow, real slow moving, which is uh, you know what you what you expect when you watch one of these series, which is a good thing. All right. And I just... put, yep. And I put the fifth. So did I. Oh. <laughs> very, very good. <laughs> All right. The next one is a bit of a trip. Um, my home hero. <laughs> a bit of a trip. How are you talking about the visuals? Uh, <laughs> I'm talking about the uh, the visual. I'm talking about the uh, the premise as well. Oh, the the premise to me, I mean, it's not very common for anime, but the premise, I'm sure that this sort of story has been told in like every language multiple times. Mm-hmm. I don't think the premise is anything stri- too strange. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, talking about the visual, is that, you know, like on purpose to, to make it, us feel a bit uncomfortable? Man, you're really charitable. Why? <laughs> because all like out in an orchestra looking completely empty, like a like a Walmart at three in the morning. You're like, oh, is that on purpose? Because the main character feels so empty. <laughs> My home hero looking like absolute shit. Oh, is that on purpose? Because uh, uh, he killed somebody, and it's like supposed to represent yeah. his twisted state of mind. No, no, no. It, it uh, I'm, I'm thinking more of a scene, uh, a, a scene where the wife 
uh, remember like um, she told she told him that you know uh, we should hide the body and you know like this is a good thing that you do you know <laughs> you, you did just it and you know like the face of her look like really unchanged it it look uh, really creepy at that time so is is it like the bad the bad production the uh, the all the chunky things is on purpose for that you know. <laughs> Nope. I don't think so, but <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, the 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 wife is like full on sociopath mode after yep. she discovers that her husband has, uh, you know, killed a man in their daughter's apartment. Uh, she's like, okay, quick, let's put put you know put the body in the bathtub and we'll we'll just uh, you know dispose of it. No one will ever know. It's fine. And yep. she even yep. uh, implies to her daughter. Well, she doesn't imply it. She just says, "Man." It would be better off, you know, the world would be better off if that guy were just dead. Yep. Uh, <laughs> she's, this is just like another a part of her day, you know. Yep, yep. Do the laundry, go get some groceries, uh, you know, watch an episode of your favorite TV show, cover up for your husband's murder, uh, put dinner on the table. <laughs> it just slots right in with everything else. Yep. And uh yeah the 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 thing is um the the boyfriend well it is it is a really a bad guy. Well like how how the show just hampered that point to us like so many times. Well the not only does it do it so many times, it does it three times in rapid succession when the the dad overhears him talking to his buddies about how he just beat up his girl. Yep. Um First, he, he hears him say that, and he's like, what? And then he hears that it's, you know, he, he hears that the it's name. his daughter. And then yep. immediately, there's like a flashback and a half to him saying exactly the same thing that he just said, uh, you know, it, like it, like 70s that, anime style. Yep. Yep. He, it, except that he, he prayed about hitting the other girl as well, like previous uh, girlfriend, and then uh, go, go into to the fact that he gonna... Um, you know, like extort uh, the money out of Rekha and then, you know, dump her and, you know, like own the very evil scheme. Yeah. Jeez. Like, well, I don't he... think the Japanese people have a particularly high opinion of Yakuza. So this guy's a Yakuza and as a result, he's made to look as evil as possible. Like with no, I don't think a Japanese person writing this, would, well, not at least not the average Japanese person, um would think to themselves, okay, I need to make sure that the portrayal of this Yakuza uh, member is nuanced. They'd just be like, oh my god, that guy has a tattoo? Throw him in the slammer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so 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 that that what make uh, the other guy from Mix. Uh, the, that what his face looked like, you know, like going through the, the hammer, the slash hammers. Ah, uh, okay. That's why he was drawn that way, because he's like a, yeah. he's a delinquent. And yep, that's how yep. delinquent delinquents look, you know. That's <laughs> how they ought to be represented. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, we we uh the <clears throat> the way it frame is that um yeah it it for within uh Tetsuo who and and, and even the portrayal of of Tetsuo is is, is very uh shaky to me as well. Is Tetsuo so, the dad? Yeah, the, the dad, the dad. Okay. And uh, he's you know like at first we see him. Uh, go going through like the, uh, uh, I think the reviews, the the fan review of his work. Is that his work? Well, he first he sees the I think the publisher. Well, maybe it is fan reviews of his work. You know how like in Japan you can self publish novels, which is where yeah. the light novel trend of yeah, like really yeah. long titles and stuff comes from. These there are websites where you just. The yep. idea is you want people to click on your stuff, so you put like an entire synopsis as the title. It yep. might be that he's published his his work uh, on one of those websites, and those are reviews from readers. Or it could be that that's like his publisher. Mm -hmm. But then, in any whatever the case may be, after he sees the comments about his work, which are pretty negative, uh, yep. then he looks at the fan reviews of somebody else who has published their work online, and. He's like, wow, this is amazing. He all, he just sticks to one pattern all the time, but the execution is so good. 
something like that. I mean, yeah, I, we yeah, don't yeah. understand yet how that is relevant to his skill set as a murderer and body hider. Um, Disposer. Yeah, body disposer. <laughs> oh, man. And... Um... <clears throat> And and it is shaky the way that you know like when he meets uh Rekha, he he imme- immediately realized that uh you know the proceed of her fate is from the abuse, and uh, when he confront her about that, she left and he make a you know a pretty pathetic you know like call for her. Yes, and that it was just, very weird. And it yeah, it just doesn't really you know like click in with like e- even like the the rest of. Of, of of the of the episode so it, it was really weird like <laughs> the, the way they do that yeah uh, he goes he goes reka huh? and then yeah oh dearie then, me i'm such a fan of the detective genre that's <laughs> like that's how he follows up his public humiliation he says out loud i'm such a fan of the detective genre oh man i didn't understand like i didn't even get what what that was supposed to be what what we were meant to take from that from him saying that out loud in public yeah. i have no idea but uh yeah i i think the whole the whole the whole thing is uh the the show try to frame is that it's it's their duty it's the uh, parent duty to protect the child even to the extent of the uh the the yakuza Who's you know like the son get just get killed off? So it, they actually yeah try to stop with that and yeah I I I don't know maybe may, maybe they they want to do that so that we can root for them. Yeah, I think that's the idea. See, he's like an everyman. He's like a salesman or yep. something, uh, and he he gets caught up in a whole thing where he's up against the yakuza now because he killed his daughter's abusive boyfriend. Uh, uh, and now it's going to be a thriller or, you know, there's going to be suspense. There's going to be action. Yep. But I don't care. I mean, this show's ugly as sin. I'm not watching more of this shit. <laughs> the art design is terrible. The, I'm like, oh, God. And the characters, when they're drawn at a middle distance, uh, look yep. like, you know, the, the sorts of things that you see in movie theaters, like a cardboard image of a character propped up. Um, like to promote whatever. Like, mm-hmm. you know, if, if one of the Minions movies, one of the animated Minions movies is playing, you go into the movie theater, there's going to be a huge cardboard cutout of a Minion, and then people can pose next to it, get a picture with it, and put it on their social media, something like that. That's how characters look when they're when it's not a close-up on them. They just look kind of cardboard. And if they're walking, the entire upper half of their body is not moving. Nothing is moving. It's just the legs that are moving. Mm-hmm the just nope nope i'm out <laughs> it's there's, there's not we don't have a lot of competent people uh you know on staff here yep that's clear from the very first you know few minutes yep all right so i put it tent the last spot uh, me too <laughs> all right <laughs> I'm gonna watch more of this note. <laughs> I, mean, I need to find out, you know, like what. Um, what Just read the trip? manga. <laughs> oh, oh, we we did talk about, you know, like him kick, uh, uh, kick this guy in, uh, uh, in the balls. In the balls. Yeah. No, he I, he didn't kick him. He like he punched oh. him, but it, he didn't have a closed fist. He like kind of slapped him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slap in the balls. But that doesn't. I mean, you can't slap somebody in the balls. The, if they're wearing jeans, the denim is gonna. You gotta kick them. Well, Why? Do you, but <laughs> maybe it's sort of like the uh, martial art move, you know, where you can just slap and maybe maybe because slap you can grab them. I that's know what I'm saying, that. though. Denim, like if your if if your legs are even a little bit apart, there's that creates tension in the fabric around yeah, yeah, your yeah. your crotch, and so people aren't gonna be able to just. You know, slap you there. Yeah. But I mean, maybe this guy was born in the ninja village from Jigokuraku and he has like special nut slapping abilities. <laughs> yep. I don't know how else to do, how else to explain it. I just. All right. It wasn't it wasn't great. 
Yep. Let's just go to the next shows then. The next one is Otonari Niginga or a Galaxy Next Door. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, we got more adult characters. My Home Hero featured, you know, the main character mm-hmm. is an adult. Otonari Niginga, same thing. I think the main character is an adult. He's a landlord. He, yep. he must be an adult, right? I mean, yeah, this is anime, true. so I probably shouldn't say that. You can be 10 years old. Or you can uh, look 10 years old, but actually be 300 years old. Uh, and then you can be a landlord. Yeah, but... Uh... Yeah, but uh, I actually like the portrayals of of the kid as well because the, the kids uh you know like they 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 look their age they act like their age but they have like a pers- um they have some pers- personality on them as well. You you like the kids? I I I I I would say that I like the kids better than the uh the main characters. So wow, okay, all right. Yeah, I don't well, agree. All right, good. The the kids are I I don't I don't care about the kids. First all of right. all, the younger bro, the youngest brother with the glasses who's always sleepy mm-hmm. and just mimics whatever his older sister says. <laughs> I whatever he he's like a nothing burger. But the sister is she's like the the grown up. You know she's always nagging him and being like, uh, I I don't know I can't remember the stuff she says. Like make sure you eat your eat your lunch. Yeah. Or no whatever sleep. Yeah. No, I let, let that child live her own life. All right. I know that her her parents are dead or something. They're not in the picture. I don't remember exactly. Are they Are they all orphans? Um, I or not all orphans, right. but are they hold are on, parents hold on. dead? I if I recall correctly, you know, because they didn't really go right. Uh, it's especially for uh for this, but um, I think the mom is died because of accident and then the dad i think he he just go with uh he just went out with uh with the mistress because uh remember the call from from him from call for the main characters to the dad and and uh, he received something uh some response i don't re- i don't remember either from the dad or the other new wife that uh they don't care about you anymore or something Remember I that? don't remember. I don't remember that at all. Yeah, I, I remember there's a photo from uh, just a flashback from uh, Ichiro, uh, that that he called he called it that and uh, he got that response. Okay. Oh, the, the mom definitely did die. I'm remembering now. Very early on in the episode, there's a funeral scene. So first, yep. the, the episode opens on Shiori, the the main female character, um, you know, who lived on that island. And there's a, there's a conversation between a couple of the older residents of the island who are like, oh, you know, I'm not sure if she's ready to go out into the, the, the world. Yep. And yep. so, you know, that obviously they kind of circle back right. around to that at the end when it turns out, oh, yeah, maybe the reason that she wasn't supposed to go live in human society is because she's not a human being. Yep. Um, but after that and then the OP, then the first scene we get is... Uh, a flashback to Ichido and his two younger siblings at the funeral. The f- for the funeral. Wife. All right. Yeah, um, so the dad must be, you know, together hold on. living with some other woman. Yeah, hold on. I think it's the opposite because the synopsis say that even since their father died, so maybe it's the funeral of the father and the mother just go, you know, I left them ah. uh, to uh, to her lover. So it's bummer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bummer for anyway. those kids, but luckily <laughs> the little sister is uh, basically a grown up, right? And uh, not not even them. We have like a uh, a cousin as well who who lived there, right? Uh, yeah, in high school uniform, uh, Chihiro, and uh, yeah, but they are just supporting characters. We have what we have here is about a guy who you know like who doing, uh, the manga things, and uh, he just got a perfect a assistant right <laughs> who do best at her job who you know are very good lucky and now she proposed a a uh, a serious relationship between them right because he touched her tail uh, or whatever you know like whatever that choppy thing is yeah stinger right she says you touched my stinger yeah stinger <laughs> he got the stinger <laughs> as well yeah, he got stung <laughs> Okay. Uh, yep. Th- yeah. Oh, all just... right. 
I, yeah, I, I, think... I, I really didn't care for this episode. I mean, well, until I, I, the last few minutes when you find out that she's not a human, then you're like, oh, okay. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's I, I mean, at least yeah. the show has an angle now. But before that, it's just like scenes of him passing manga pages to her so that she can, you know, like do trace the highlights in the hair and do screen tone and stuff. I mean, that's not it, it's difficult to make the the process of assembling a manga chapter interesting. It's hard to dramatize that. But uh-huh. this show barely even tried. <laughs> All right. But um, what is the reason why she want to be assistant of this guy? Because... Because she read know, his manga. Wow. That was part that, of her grandmother's collection. That's, that, that, that's you know, like a very wish fulfillment right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not only is go. it... Uh, I am a male manga artist writing a story about a male manga artist who gets a beautiful female assistant and I accidentally touch her tail and she's not a human being. So now we have to get married or something. Yeah. Uh, Not only that, but she's also his fan. (laughs) And and she a princess. So she knows that she, she, she well off. Right. So this guy's royalty now as well. Gosh. (laughs) We we got like a galactic of, uh, uh, of legendary heroes right there. Yeah, Legion of Galactic Heroes, right, Le- right there. The Legend of the Galactic Wish Fulfillment. <laughs> oh god! But uh, that I go. That's really something that uh, you know, like I'm, 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 I'm a bit intriguing. Like, yeah. Uh, there, there gonna be a scene where he go into his, uh, sorry, she, he go into her galaxy, right, and meet all the people. Well, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is exactly because it's not like she was living in outer space. She was just living on an island. That's true. Uh, and I assume that island was populated, you know, mostly by other people of her species. Yeah. Um, yeah. So maybe there will be an episode where he, or like a two episode mini arc where he goes to her island and meets her, her family since yeah. they're in this serious relationship now because he touched her stinger. Um, that's never going to get old saying that. <laughs> Did you just touch my stinger? Yeah. I, I don't think you are the type who touch uh other body uh, other person body when they unconscious right yeah well i uh, mean but at but, least he's not that type of person because there are a lot of anime about yeah, the types of but, people who would do that yep yeah. but i tried to save you yeah i thought it was yeah. a g-pen i mean he did it the way yeah. the show you know the the shot of her little tail does look like she's she's got a pen stuck in her Yep. like a specific manga tool or something. So it's 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 really goofy the whole way that that reveal comes to be, and the whole concept of the stinger is obviously like it's just it's just weird and wacky. But at the at least like it is about two adult characters, and they they're not just like children in adults' bodies, unlike yep. the little sister who is an adult in a child's body. <laughs> And uh, I absolutely glad that it 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 good. That's why you know in the last five minutes because you know that when he, uh, when he pass out, you know that when he hold on the metal grip and he pass out, I thought that uh, they go into you know like he pass out until the very next day and they miss the deadline and it's gonna be like a room a room big bummer. <laughs> but yeah, no. that that could easily have been the case, but that would be I think more of like a comedic slant <laughs> on it. Yep. And this show is not really, not really yeah, comedy. No, 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 no. It's a, it's a very serious relationship drama between uh, a man and his soon-to-be wife with a stinger. Alien. <laughs> yeah, right. And um, and we get at that list that he's a um, how uh, he, uh, the he he had many people rented on that house as well. So we we might see more of the resident. Yeah, living there. definitely. We even saw what they looked like. Like, not their faces, I don't think. But as um, maybe the little sister is describing his responsibilities oh, right. as a landlord or who who the other tenants are, little yep. images of them kind of pop up on the screen. All right. So, yes, I'm sure it'll be, you know, like uh, Kotaro Lives Alone, where we met mm-hmm. all the other tenants, yep. something like that. Yep. Yep. There, there's a manga guy in there as well. Remember? There's another mangaka? In, oh, in you co- mean in that in show? Yes, yep. the main character of that show is a mangaka as well. But uh, the, instead of giving himself like a, a really hot 
uh, assistant, uh, the author of Kotaro Lives Alone des- decided to explore like child abandonment and yep. trauma, <laughs> which I think is a <laughs> lot more interesting. But that's just me. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. All right. Uh, what's your rank on this? Ninth. Oh, uh, it's my knight as well. What'd you say? Knight. The oh, I, this is interesting. I don't think we've ever, we already have four shows that are exactly the same out of six. Yeah, I don't think true. we've ever matched up. Well, you know, that exactly. But I don't, we might not on the next few. I don't know. Yep, that's true. The next one is another sequel, also my rankings. I don't know if this the, is a sequel, really. Yep. It's, it's, it's more like a spin off. It's, it's not really a spin off, it's a side story. Yeah. It's just kind of like a little anthology of a, and, a bunch of bunch of stories that happened. Uh, I, I I don't know if all of them will necessarily be stories that could have happened within the the time frame of the first season. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so far, you know, the first two in this first episode did take place or could have taken place um, during the the main story. Yeah, that's true. I I I don't know why. Because if they are commissioned to do another Oshima ranking, why they uh, why don't they just you know like go ahead to the stories? And what instead, do you mean? what do you mean they? The the studio, the V studio, the animation studios don't choose like the projects. Well, they they bid on projects, yeah, but they, it's not like they uh, bid on a franchise and they're like, okay, we want to. We want to do the second season now, please. They they do what they're told, you know. Yeah, I I, I my uh I just mean that the existence of that of, of this side story just just a clear mystery to me because they could have just go ahead with the, you know, like continuing the story instead of you know like spending a whole season just doing side stories. I don't know. I don't know what the reason for that was. Maybe the idea is that I mean the manga is still ongoing. So mm-hmm. maybe their plan is to adapt Alsama ranking long term, and this is kind of like buying them time or buying time for the mangaka to put out more chapters, more material to be adapted. Could All be right. that's like that's their strategy. All right, take that. Uh, yeah. What What do you feel about these two uh, mini episodes? I thought they were cute. Yeah, I thought they half on me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the the heartwarming element was a little bit uh, like my my buzz was kind of killed by the end of the second one, right. where where you know Boji and Kage are like, let's help this girl. We we met this girl. She's you know her mom's sick. She just wants to get some you know make some money so that she can pay for the medicine to make her mom healthy. Let, let's help her out. And then Despa's like, okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to loan her this money. And then she's going to have to do all these lessons that I say. And then she's going to have to pay me the money back. Dude, just give her the money. Just <laughs> just give her the money for the medicine. Her mom is dying. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think uh, it's supposed to be that, you know, like uh, they support her to improve herself so this time is the education instead of just right now give her, give her the money but i i understand the urgency <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean why does it why why can't you just be charitable why do you have to like make sure that she is paying make sure that she pays you back and also that she's educated according to your personal standards that's True. <laughs> just, you have money she doesn't give her a little bit <laughs> And yeah, it's it's a big crossover as well, you know. Like, uh, I I, I pretty much uh enjoy uh what happened before that, but you know, like the the whole the whole result is just you know like a a, fa- a flash forward to you know like her knowing how to drive and she's smiling and you know like the mom miraculously uh doesn't die yet and you know like they they have a happy family ever after. Yeah. Um, yeah i mean well, it's i still i still think it's i still think it's real cute and uh yeah the, the the design of the little girl and like how hard she tries on her third beanbag throw yep. and you know boji oh, jumps uh, out of the way but then he he reflects on what he's done and he realizes 
um, he realizes what the right thing to do is. You know, it's it's nice. Yeah. Um, the it's it's written about the way you would expect that sort of story to go, and it feels good. But yep. then at the end, I'm just like, what? <laughs> Dude, stop yeah. being such a dick and just give her some cash. And even even like this, the first session, I I I really nice. Well, it 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 say more to Kage, you know, like a really good intention. She tried yeah. to uh, he he tried to help out the the woman who you know like claiming that um uh, her leg had been hurt. <laughs> Yeah, and, I was on uh, the fence during that first story as to, like, there were one of two ways I could see it going. I figured out pretty quickly that he, you know, yeah. he, this this woman was either going to have the mushroom and it was going to be his reward. And the, the point of the episode kind of is that he did all these things not expecting a reward. Uh, yeah. So he did it selflessly, but he got one anyway. You know, he was rewarded for his good deed, but he didn't do it for the mm -hmm. reward. Uh, mm -hmm. So that was one way it could go. The other way was that the woman in the house would actually be the monster, because when he's talking to the florist and he's or the yeah. what's someone who works at an apothecary, I don't know yeah, what yeah, you yeah. would call that sort of person. But when he's like, "Hey, I need this mushroom," the the troll looking character that tells him, "Oh no, I mean you you would only be able to find that in such and such a forest, and there's a monster there." I thought there was a potential for the woman to actually be the monster. Yep. And that, then it would but, be like a little twist, but that would have been great as well. I I would expect that as well, but I I I think I I do think that this story just to flesh out the uh more of the characters and the world, which I really uh you know like I I I I I really want to say, it's just the story side is a bit you know like more simple minded. Yeah, I'm okay with that because well, the the first season didn't end well I, like i i don't yep. really trust <laughs> the person who writes Osama ranking to tell a big story because <laughs> then the show will just like poop its pants so uh, i'm good with little like little short vignettes or side stories that's honestly i, I think i prefer that <laughs> because otherwise right. we're gonna get more stories about whatever happened at the end of season two i don't even remember like the miranjo was like totally forgiven by the giant, the giantess who she murdered, yep. and whatever else, like a bunch of shonen fights, and I, I don't want to go through all that again. Yep. Uh, I, I, I still think that we will get uh some more out of them as well. Maybe we will get some segment uh out of Miranjos, and you know, uh, and and maybe Bochi's uh, mom as well because um. Uh, they could go anywhere, right? They could go any time frame and any characters. Yeah, I think so. I mean, because they're the way they're, I guess the framework for this, um, for this series is they've got a narrator, you know, and they'll, they'll mm -hmm. like start a little mini story and the narrator will be like, as our heroes were training with Despa, they, you know, yep. such, such and such a thing happened and, and Kage really needed to find this mushroom or whatever he he'll, he'll kind of like introduce it a little bit and then we'll we'll get into it the narrator will fade out so you can use the narrator to introduce the audience to any of the cast members from Alsama ranking yeah uh, and based on the OP and ED featuring well I actually can't remember I remember that the ED is by Imer who I love um yep. so it's great that she's returned but specifically like visually I remember that the OP features a wide um array of characters from the first season so that kind of indicates to me that we'll be seeing a lot of them and it's not just going to be boji kage kage boji etc mm -hmm. yep all right i just realized that looking at your as your ranking that's uh we have fossil left and you have number one to four left that's right so so your top four is is the one that we we are talking next yeah including this oh. one yeah including this one uh, you put that higher than me then, uh, because I put this seven out of ten. I uh, number three. All, All right. right. Yep. All right. Next to the to the big gun. Next to the big gun. Yep. Yeah. Skip, skip and loafer. Skip and loafer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I read uh, earlier. I alluded. I alluded to the fact that I read uh, some of the manga for a bunch of these series. Um, for the season preview, I was like yep. checking out what we were in for in terms of all these anime. 
So Skip and Loafer, I read the first chapter, then I read the first volume, then I read two more volumes after that. So oh right, wow, wow! I went like real deep into the manga, and I loved it. Um, thought the all manga right, was so great. The, so, all right, the manga had to be good for you to to keep to keep going on because uh, I I my impression after I watched the first episode is that I thought this is the original because there are just too many, you know, like too, they are just so confident, so. Um, you know, like so distinctive that I I thought that this is like the vision of the uh, of the director himself. Nope. Well, so. herself. Herself. All right. Uh, Koto wow. Dei is the is the director. She's a woman. Right. She directed Silver Spoon as well. Oh man! Another oh, high school series. Yep. And also another series that's kind of set in the countryside, or mm. not exactly the countryside. Uh, it's more agrarian, it, I guess. Yeah, it it countryside because I remember like the main characters from that show is from the city, and he decided to go to that school, which is set in the countryside. Right. So this show is kind of the reverse. Right. Right. That's right. So maybe. Oh, uh, oh that's kind of interesting. Like it's a duology from her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not that she was the creator of either of the, you know, the yeah. two manga, but I wonder what a third part of that potential trilogy might be. Like somebody from the past who comes to the future or something like that. <laughs> All right. Oh, or the wow. fish out of water trilogy. Yep. So, yeah, they have the manga for that. I I think I'm gonna read that, but maybe I just I just gonna gonna watch the anime instead and 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 get into the manga later on because you know like the this first episode just charmed me all the way. Yeah. It's very good. You know what I, you know, I I love a lot of things about it, but you know what I love the most probably is the is, main female characters. Well, yes, her her personality, her character design, it's mm -hmm. just so. She just seems to be her own person, you know. That's true. Yep. It, she doesn't look like a shoujo heroine. Uh, yep. She doesn't have like the same concerns about finding love and and uh, like making the most of her youth. At least not in the way that a lot of other anime characters do, where they're just like, "I'm gonna join a club, I'm gonna make some friends, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a guy, I'm gonna, you know, experience my youth." She just seems she's like very driven. She, you know? she, she has, has a specific life goal. Out. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But the in to offset the fact that she has, she is like so, uh, she does have her life figured out, and she's like rigid. She's like a rigid sort of thinker. Offsetting that is the fact that she's really clumsy. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So you get a little bit of humanity in there whenever she, you know, like loses her way in a in a series of train stations and ends up like leaning up against a wall in defeat. Yep. Uh, because she's completely lost and doesn't know how to get to her school, where she's going to give the commencement speech uh, yep. for the freshman class. I, I just love the. Uh, uh, the uh the information that we got when she get into the the, the train the tram and uh and uh, they just show us this is the express train so i i just i just love that because that moment we know that she she already you know like get out on the wrong foot huh this may <laughs> she, have been a detail less. that i missed so this is yeah. we learn right away from like the a yeah. voice that comes on over the speaker or something no 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 no, no. so we come uh we learn right away right after she said like uh there's they gonna be two stop from here, right? And then she get into the train, and then we get we get the shot up to that train. That say it's it the express uh train. Okay. So it this is stop. So there's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I missed this because I'm like I live kind of in the suburbs, yeah. um. So there's no public. Tra well, I mean there is public transportation where I live, but not a lot of people use it. Almost mm -hmm. everyone has a car. Right. Um So I I'm not experienced in taking public transit so that's not even that's not something that i would be like a, not a connection that i would make um, and, uh, but that's great yeah I, i've watched the episode twice just because i love it so much so oh, I, nice. I i pick up on these details yes and yeah it's it just the girl uh, she 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 have like the no nonsense attitude but uh you know, like the the moment that she realized that she doesn't have uh she doesn't have like the uh, the the speech uh uh things and 
the the speed paper she just go ahead and and, and read it and even yeah. like the uh the, the headmaster just say like she she didn't uh uh play once <laughs> it just so it just so good yeah i she is she is really i mean it's not as though her character is unpredictable um because she That's behaves true. she behaves in a very human way so nothing That's that right. she does is is like terribly surprising i guess yeah but at the same time it just it feels it feels a little bit like you're caught off guard by some of the stuff she does because you mm-hmm. are watching an anime and you're expecting the characters to you know adhere to certain tropes or behave in certain ways yep. and skip and loafer really isn't i and I it's really... not really interested in that yeah, I really think that it it is more suited at the live action uh series, you know, because that that is the way that the girl would act uh, in, you know, like in in those uh live action uh shows. Well, the but, whole detail about like not even blinking once, and being able to give her through animation such yep. like a kind of frozen facial expression. Yeah. Um, you know, those are those are details that animation can really get to more effectively than live action can i i agree and but i think it would work fine as live action yeah yeah and because this is you know like the uh the animation they they make a lot of you know nuance and you know like uh as character expression that uh the live action doesn't have so this is actually you know like a step further and this is actually pretty good so you know i i get i get all these uh uh all the good things that I can take. Yeah, it's very nice. And, and and we have like on the other the other male, uh, Shusuke. What do you think about him? I yeah, think he's he's a, he's a little aloof. bit of an enigma. Yep, yep. You know, he's he's right. very friendly, um, mm-hmm. but he he's it seems to be like a very cal- kind of calculated and measured friendliness. Yep. You know, right. he doesn't seem yep. to be like. Uh, really cheerful he's Mm -hmm. he's just friendly that's it there's yeah but he it's there's nothing really powering that um it's just a decision that he's made to act that way so it seems like there's probably something else um behind it yeah um yeah but he he clearly very amused at uh, at misuki Yes. At, uh, at the girl. Yeah, it's <laughs> not I don't behavior. it's not like I think he has some sort of ulterior motive and he's trying to deceive everybody. He's probably yeah. just trying he it's it's not as though he like I don't know. Some something went on with him before high school and he probably doesn't want people to know about it. Right. So he's he's, you know, putting on a persona of yeah. being like the kind of friendly guy who everyone will like. Um but yeah, I mean, so far it's, it's working on me. I think he's, I think he's fun. Yep. I, I think he's kind-hearted. Uh, yep. You know, I think he's nice. But yep. I think there's more to learn about him as well. Yeah. I my only concern is that I, uh, I'm not sure is it gonna be you know a drama like is it ever going to be drama because the first episode is just really sunshine and you know like, uh, really fun to watch. But uh, is there any high stake? Well, there could there could be. I mean, if yeah. the if the show does its job right, then even the you know the day to day workings of high school can be dramatic. That that is true. And, and I mean, like, if there's potential for drama, I would say that it probably lies in Sosuke's character because he's the mm-hmm. the person who seems to be holding his cards closest to his chest. Yep, yep. yep. Um, I don't That's... think there's going to be a lot of drama surrounding Mitsumi. Because she is, she is like <laughs> she's the like the kind of sunshine book. character. <laughs> yep. Um, just because of how, like, uh, I don't know, straightforward and and good hearted she is. Oh man, I I, I love the fact that uh, she's like an open book to the point that uh, she talk uh, on phone with her her best friends who still live in the uh, in the rural area and and to the uh, uh, little siblings. And they all they all know despite the fact that she hides, uh, she hides that she get lost on the train. They they all pick up on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's it is really nice that she uh continues to chat with Fumi, her best friend, yeah. multiple times in this episode. Yeah. I think we see her get on the phone with her twice. Um. 
I wonder if that's why uh, Dei might have been interested in directing. I wonder if she comes from a rural background. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to say that word. Rural. I wonder if she comes from a rural background. Um, it, and she enjoys the, seeing that sort of thing represented on screen and being, yeah, you know, making sure that it's done right. It doesn't surprise me if she did. And yeah, and, and, and I think she did a very good job. Like uh, the scenes where the where her best friend just come to uh, uh, to to the, to the house, and then they just it's it changes the stuff. It just so surreal. It, it just you know like so natural. Yeah, it's very it's like very neighborly. Yeah. Um, they're they probably both have uh, you know farms or gardens yep. where yep. they work or that they maintain, and so. You know, if you have a farm, you know that sometimes you end up with extra uh, yep. because yep. you're not really in charge of, I mean, you do your best to try to manage everything, but you're not really in charge of what grows or how much. Um, yep. So sometimes you end up with more and give it to your neighbor, get some in return. And it's it, very, it, yeah, real friendly. It just so, it just so Asian, you know, like uh, this is, this is really, you know, like what my mom would do as well. So, you know, oh, like, yeah. I, I just totally see it. Nice. Uh, so yeah, here's a here's a little fun bit of trivia for you. Uh, this manga is serialized in a in a magazine called Afternoon, and right. in this same manga, Vinland Saga, Land of the Lustrous, Parasite, from like 25 years ago, Mushishi, <laughs> Blade of the Immortal, all of these series have run in the same ma magazine as Skip and Lover. Well, all right, they 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 split. Uh, very, very clearly into two two sides, you know, like they ha we have like the a very um uh, rurals um kind of otherworldly shows or uh, a slave life like this and Bushishi, uh, what's the other that you mentioned? Uh, Vinland Saga, Vinland Saga for in, into the other side of Land Mount, of the know, Lustrous, like, Land of the Lustrous, yes, otherworldly. Wow, Blade and of then, the Immortal, Blade of the Immortal would fall into the same with uh, Villain Saga and uh, Parasite, more plot oriented, but but kind of you know like we as well. So it, it actually they have a very intriguing uh you know se selection right there. Yeah, it wow. just it's yeah it's a seinen magazine, uh, and I I don't know I guess looking at all the stuff that they published, you also have like um, Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko. Uh, Yokohama oh. shopping log, which would also be yep. pretty rural. Mm -hmm. um, it just seems like they've they've got a pretty wide selection. Mm -hmm. What they're looking for is just artists with strong uh, voices. Yep, yep, yep. Because yeah, they uh, there's all the stuff that with with very strong vision. So, well, cool, really, really cool. All right, I put it first. I put it second. Yep. Unsurprisingly, all right. The next one is another big one. Mm -hmm. Ten Goku Daimaku or Heavenly Delusion. So it's like the second ser series uh, out of the ten that uh, have a mention about heaven. Uh, kind of, yeah. Jigokuraku is hell's paradise, um, right. but the Goku in Gokuraku, meaning paradise, is also in Tengoku, meaning heaven. So they have like the same root word, I think. Mm. Yeah, this, right. is, this is my favorite. Oh uh, my my! Is, this is my favorite as well. So, yeah, oh, it's not your favorite. Skip and Loafer was your favorite. All right, my second favorite. Okay, <laughs> but um, yeah, the character design is it caught me a bit off off good because it kind of you know like it it looked a bit inconsistent uh at place, but it really fit the uh the series. Well, it's the it's the same character design, probably not the same character designer, like doing the animation designs, but it's um, by the same artist as uh, Sorimachi, and yet the town moves. Oh right, 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 right. Oh wow, right. So the, yeah, the characters do I look very similar. Uh, they kind of have like U shaped faces. the The chin, their chins are not very strong, and they have mm -hmm. really round eyes. Yep. 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 I, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, it is kind of interesting that the that characters with that kind of softer design are now being put into a post a post apocalyptic uh, scenario. Yeah, doesn't exactly uh, seem to fit at first glance, but there's a lot of detail 
um, and a lot of mystery and intrigue in this first episode. So yeah, it's okay that the characters don't look exactly like you would expect them to. Yeah, um, I I have a mixed feeling about the post apocalyptic uh settings because uh just just because they kind of look the same, you know, like we have the ruins, we have like on these uh uh on the trees growing out, and we have like um on the uh, unused car, everything just look like in ruins, but. Uh, this one set in in Japan that that set it out a bit from you know like the like of the Last of Us, uh, or other post apocalyptic settings. I mean, Basically it's an, it's an, it's a manga. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep, it's, yep. it's kind of to be expected. I think that it would be set in Japan, right? Yep. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I just, I just mean that it's set in Japan, so it, it look a bit different as well. Like, uh, like the the sideboard look different and. And um, the houses look look different than than, than the American person. Uh, my point is that um, while 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 initially I I I am I'm not really a fan of the post apocalyptic world. Um, I I think this one this one does its job. So in general, so, you don't like post apocalyptic stuff, is what you're saying? Uh, the settings, the setting only, because it's it's look kind of the same to me. It's it's how do you the setting is is what more interests me. I think the the background art in the series is is pretty good. I mean, I think it stands yeah, yeah, yeah. head and shoulders above everything else. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's 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 very consistent in how ruinous it is. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's there's uh, vines climbing up, chain link fences, and a lot of metal surfaces are rusted, and just a lot of attention to detail. Um, and it, and yeah, it all and seems it, to be, you know, illustrated. Mm-hmm. You know, like they mm-hmm. people really worked hard on making it look that way instead of yeah. just using some like three D software. Yeah, and uh, e- uh, even like the contrast between that that world and and the world of the um, of, of 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 the student who live inside the the dome. Right. The contrast between that is, you know, it's actually, you know, like uh, we we uh we can see the contrast and uh, and even like the little detail they put on on that world, like the uh, the toilet that had the the plan on it, yeah, and uh and Kiruko have to have to plug that out in order to use the toilet, which is you know like is it not in function? Well, I don't think it had running water. Yeah, so, that's right. So you probably just plucked it out. I mean, I was about to say something kind of gross. Right, uh, just go, go which ahead. kind of fits this series because this series is kind of perverted. Um, perverted, is it? Yeah. Oh yeah. I. All right, because I, I, I I'm not seeing it. Uh, in the in this episode, but go on. Did you forget the scene where she's like completely naked and she? Uh, oh right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. She, she, tries she tried to, to kiss herself, herself in the mirror. Well, yeah, and com- like the specific way that that shot is framed so that you get a bunch of her underboob. Yeah, slip my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. Well, go good. On. That's. I mean, I wish it would slip my mind. Um, yeah. There's that, and then the the scene where she, like, of course, when she's like pulled down her pants and sat on the toilet. Uh, Maru, the 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 guy who she's escorting to. Yep. Where where are they going exactly? Heaven. Heaven. Yeah, that's the that's. They we we can assume that they're heading towards the orphanage, um, yep. which they only know by the name Heaven. But she's like his bodyguard, I guess, and she's accompanying him on this journey. So they're looking for supplies together in like abandoned houses. Uh, she pulls down her pants to and sits on the toilet, and then of course he walks by. Yep. 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 You know, there's just like some uh, there's just some anime stuff going on. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, you you talking about you 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 was about to say something cross. Oh, just the reason that she pulled that plant out was not so that she'd be able to use the toilet, just so that yep. plant wouldn't be, you know, oh, <laughs> obstructing her in a very specific way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, the, I that's... mean, I think watching the show, there's going to be. It's obviously not like made in abyss levels of, although. I've, you know, this manga is pretty popular on like alternative anime sites. Um, mm-hmm. And 
I know some. I don't know any plot details about it, but I know that there is some stuff in here that, that gets like really kind of twisted and dark, um, hmm. in ways that you probably wouldn't expect from watching this first episode. So, right. yeah, uh, because yeah. because we we get a bit at the end there where you know like they obviously be, be drunk by by the uh, uh, by that woman. They're drunk and, uh, at the end. I I don't think they're drunk. I, I think they just um I oh. think they got uh, they got put by the sleeping pill or something because they 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 fast they they went fast asleep. Oh okay. And, For whatever uh, reason, I don't remember that. Uh, I mean, I do remember the show making it very clear that this woman is like not who she seems. There's kind of an o- ominous, um, yep. you know, and, there's uh, like a there's a focus on a weapon that she has in the yep. house. Uh, like a lingering shot of of that and i yeah i love the little detail that they got there like um uh when uh when the uh the two mentioned about about the kids she actually act a bit more you know like more un- unstably unstably and um so so that that has something with you know like all the trauma of the kid but uh the little detail that i want to mention is uh the fact that um uh, uh, when when kiruko and maru fall fast asleep we get back to the scenes where uh in in, in the sink and, and we see that uh two of these um uh little um both uh that got used and the other one is uh it's like brand new so like the the woman never use the uh never eat no, no, she, she doesn't eat, so it, it means that uh, it got poison, or uh, it's it's got uh the the pills that uh uh that 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 now affecting Kiruko and Maru. Okay, so she put it she put it in all three. I I think she put it in into the the pot, and uh, she she did she didn't eat. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Huh. So I really like that detail, and uh, for whatever purpose, and, and we see like the uh, monster just roaming around uh, the corner, and she seem you know like unhinged by that. So it is mean that you know like there's something on, you know, something going on. Yeah, but, it it doesn't make a lot of sense in the first place that there's this inn that exists like al- just yeah. along the road that is completely untouched by the yep. by the yep. cataclysm or the collapse. That's what they call it, I think. The collapse. Yep, yep. True. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't really understand how these two kids can uh, be so trusting, like can go in yep. there and be like, oh, surely nothing bad will happen to us in here. This is completely normal that there's <laughs> just this little slice of heaven right along a major road. Yep. 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 But yep. I also yep. think there's something up with the kids just in yep. general. For example, the similarity between Maru's design and Tokyo's design in uh, the orphanage, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Tokyo says to, or is it Mimi Mimihime, who says huh. to Tokyo, "I've, I, you know, I have, I have dreams, and in them, two people come from the outside, and one of them looks exactly like you." Hmm. Hmm. Do you remember this? Yep, I remember that. And yeah. um... so the similarity in appearance between Tokyo and Maru makes me think Mimihime can like see the future, or else she, uh, I I don't know, like Maru is a clone of Tokyo. Or Tokyo's a clone of Maru, or maybe or, they just they just siblings. That could that, that could be, yeah. yeah. But what specifically, like the track that I'm on, is maybe the reason that Maru and Kidu are they can be so trusting is because they actually don't have a lot of experience navigating the outside world because they're like they're clones of people who were raised in the orphanage. Hmm. So they don't have like they. It's not as though they were born out here do you remember that well, scene where uh they encounter like a, a gang of thugs well and yeah the but... thugs are like you all are young enough that you would have been born into this um yep. i think that might have been a like a purposeful misdirection right but isn't it uh, make more sense the other way around is that um uh, tokyo and mimi he makes a clone from their real bodies and then they were put into that uh that room it, that I mean, I think on the surface that does make more sense, um, but at the same time, like, mm-hmm. how many kids do you think would have survived in this sort of environment? That that is true. I think yeah. it's more likely that they st- like 
that all the kids who exist in the orphanage are like that's the vast majority of human children who are still alive mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they're so any any humans any young human beings any children like teenagers and younger who exist in the outside world would have originated <coughs> from this orphanage because that's the only place that's the only like uh facility or, or or environment where you can raise kids yeah I, but i don't I know think... i mean there's it's it's hard it's hard to say the show is not really giving any clues yeah because it's um, uh, not obvious we, ones that's right because we don't have enough information as well just based on the first episodes because yeah except from the kids from the orphanage and and uh kiruko and, and maru we we don't see any of the you know like uh young people but uh yeah that that's something that i would take in mind to see uh, uh to see in future episodes but uh i i would say that they are more capable of you know like uh uh guarding themselves and uh, stay uh and you know like not being abused or or, or ambushed by the others as we see in the uh how they deal with the uh, the group of adults yeah maru knows uh He's like a martial, martial arts act. expert, and yeah. Kido has a Kido has like a weird Kidoko has a weird gun. Yep, yep uh, that yep. can melt stuff and fires laser I, beams. I I think I know where that's gonna come from. Well, the orphanage, right? No, no, no. Can I have the great no seas? The uh, oh, on, the, on the relief from the past. Remember? Yeah, it's the uh, <laughs> what what is that thing called? The bark cutter or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> They have to be uh, come from the same source. <laughs> well, I mean, this is a very nerfed version of the one from Kaina. Because that's yeah. like the ultimate weapon. It fires a mm -hmm. laser beam that has like a a diameter of 10 feet or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, and uh, why she have that gun is also another interesting mystery. So uh, Yeah, and it's battery and powered very weird yeah that's right and um it's, it's very powerful as well um mm -hmm. maybe a bit unreliable because uh my room mentioned that sometimes it just you know like it it, it it just doesn't function right but yeah that's definitely <laughs> foreshadowing <laughs> <laughs> yeah something bad very is gonna happen and the gun's not gonna work yeah and um yeah, they've mentioned about the monster looking outside and we see that monster, but uh I think there will be more, you know. So uh we, we don't know yet about about the world and we um yeah if even that the motive because uh what uh I I I think we we don't know yet why Maru want to go to that often if in the first place. Maybe to meet Tokyo, but we, we don't know that for sure. And even like the uh the children at the orphanage, they are they are different as well. Like uh we, we see more of them. We see we see like the guy who can jump like two stories. Yeah. Uh down to the uh, to the basement. Uh and you know, they are I, I, I think we will see more from them. Yep. They'll I'm sure that we'll get scenes in the orphanage where they like get more and more curious about the outside world and start to stick their noses into the adults business and try to learn the oh. secrets and then at the same time uh kiruko and maru will get closer and closer to the orphanage and eventually the two sets of characters will cross over yep yep uh and uh, the note that tokyo received is that from uh, mimi hime that uh you want to go to the outside world the outside of outside i don't know who sent that well was it Tokyo? Was he the one who got uh, that I'm not, message? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it's Tokyo, but uh, I, 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 I'm not hundred percent sure. Well, it was either him or Mimihime. Yeah. Um. In any case, I I don't know who who sent him that message. It could have been one of the adults, like the the director of the orphanage, who eventually tells him, mm -hmm. "Hey, like the outside world is hell. There's monsters and stuff. You're only safe in here." Um. Yeah. Even just giving him that piece of information was more than uh, the other two the other two adults in that scene thought was wise. So yep. it's possible that like the director of the orphanage is is the one who sent that message and is slowly planting the idea into the kids' heads that there's an outside world. And I I don't know maybe it'll eventually be revealed that they need them to go out there and and 
get something and bring it back or who knows <laughs> we don't we yeah we don't know who sent it could even be someone who's not even within the orphanage that like hacked in and, and sent that message or something there's that, that's true there's yep. like infinite possibilities yep Yep. So ne definitely, you know, like we just see just a tiny bit of, you know, like of that world, and yeah, I'm I'm very intrigued to uh, uh to see more of that. Yeah. Yep. My number two out of ten, and you number one, right? Yep. All right. Last but not least, Yamada Kun to Rebelu nine 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 no koi wo suru. Yep. <laughs> Good job. My love story with Yamaraku at level 999. Yeah. I don't know exactly how you would pronounce the level 999 in Japanese. Oh my. <laughs> level would be Deberu, it, it, but it, it, I don't know how you would it, say the 999. It, it's too advanced. <laughs> yeah. Too advanced for me. Yep. All right. I, I, I would say that we have a we have, we have a cute little story here. I I think Akane the the main girl she just super expressive, yep. as opposed to Yamada Ku who is have zero ex, uh, expression in his face. Right. So uh, I think it's a bit a, a tricky thing for you know like for uh for for me at least to invest on on uh, Yamada Ku at uh at the moment because you know like. He just being stoic all the times, so it it all fall into academic shoulders to you know like to really you know like share this relationship and you know like even sell her, uh, current um you know uh situation, because I think she, uh, I think she does it. I mean, I think she's yeah, capable well, of that. So it's all right. Yeah, so far, so far, but uh, you know, like we we get we get more along the line, and even even in this episode, like on the on this uh situation that she get uh, herself into is it also a bit predictable for me, like she get into the uh uh the light event uh just to see uh, the ex boyfriend, and then uh when 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 she see him like face to face, he actually just fake with uh. Uh, by calling Yamada uh, her boyfriend. So it is like, you know, the like anime stuff. Yeah. And then she ends up in his bed at his apartment. Yep. And doesn't yep. remember yep. what happened the previous night. Yep. It's, yeah. It's right. very tropey. Yep. But I'm, I I'm all right with that. Yep. We got Morio Asaka directing and the manga, like the humor from the manga is translated very well. Mm -hmm. Um, it does. He he does have that style where you you get a sense of what the manga is like. Um, yep. Little on screen text and characters making kind of simple reaction faces. Mm -hmm. um, moments of like really expressive animation that pop up only like in a, in a couple places throughout the episode. Like for example, when she's uh, beating up all the the NPC characters in the forest. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. To, I, in I order think to this, vent this her is... rage about her boyfriend leaving her for a girl yeah, that... that he met in this online game. Yeah, that was a good gag. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, it's it this looking at the synopsis of it, um, like it's a gamer themed romance. This is not for me really, mm -hmm. um, but I think that the the anime version of it is is looking pretty reasonable in terms of like entertainment value. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. I think the timing, it's also very well timed. Like, it's clear that a veteran director is on board here. Like, the uh, the scene where Akane is, is messaging Yamada-kun, mm -hmm. and he only responds, like, every two minutes. So there will be, like, little stretches of time where you see her, like, sipping her tea in front of her laptop. Yep, um, yep, yep. And the, it's the, the angle that, of, of that shot is... is expertly chosen because you you see it in profile where you don't see what's happening on the laptop so what's emphasized is her eye line towards the laptop like her staring at it which makes it feel like it takes even longer for the message to come um so that's i, I just feel like there are a lot of little directorial touches like that that are yep. make it make it pretty enjoyable to watch mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
already and um, yep I, I i think i get her situation where you know she got dumb and she just you know like still very heartbroken so it is something you know i can really relate but that's gonna be you know like just that just this episode right because the next one uh it is more about uh, akane and yamada uh this relationship and i think she will get over the old one soon and they might be together for in the games <laughs> I don't Not know, sure, man. maybe. <laughs> um, I'm just like, I'm, I'm all right with Yamada being kind of the, the way I view it is like, she's been dumped. It's yeah. her, uh, it, everything that we learn in this episode is basically about her and her character and her romantic, like her love life. Um, so if she wants to, if she like meets this guy and he's really good looking and she wants to move on, and, I mean, she's, there you go. She found a guy to do it with. It's kind of like uh, Kimi will... What is it? Ins I'm just going to say Insomniacs After School. It's just Insomniacs After School. Um, she needs to move on from breakup and... Oh, look, here's a guy. But it's actually kind of funny. And oh, right. actually, uh, you know, competently directed. Yep. So, I'm in. Do you think... Yep. Do you think that um, Nana Hachi from Nana... Uh, would be would react the same if uh she in Akane's situation. There are there are some similar some some similarities between their characters. Yeah, they're both kind of shallow. Shallow. Um, yeah, <laughs> right. I mean they are. Uh, this is like going to this uh, event for this video game that her ex boyfriend used to play is something that that Hachi would probably do. Um, mm -hmm. And being immediately taken with a guy's looks upon meeting him and like kind of fantasizing a little bit about, oh, what would it be like if I were with this guy? That's also something Hachi would do. Yeah. Um, yep. Get drunk. <laughs> right. Yeah. Get drunk and yep. end up in another guy's bed. Um, yeah. <laughs> hopefully <laughs> that, that would be something that I would not want Hachi to do just because yeah. I feel like she's probably done a little bit of that already and she should work more on herself. Yep. Um, yep. yep. But... It is something that she might do, you know. She would definitely do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, the most recent, the because we're also watching Nana for this for this podcast. I actually haven't uploaded any uploaded any of those conversations yet, but I will right. eventually. Yep. Um, okay. <laughs> the most recent thing that we've seen from Hachi is actually her really going back and forth about uh, entering into a sexual relationship with a new guy. She's yep. like, she really considers the pros and cons of it. Um, yep. so she's being a little bit, a little bit more thoughtful, a little bit more careful. And uh, she still end up uh, going through with that. Well, she does, but uh, you know, at least she, at least she gave it some thought, you know? And she's feel bad for it. Yeah, I know. Missy. Well, All right, she, but, well. yeah, she, she does feel bad about it, but that's just because, I mean, why is that exactly? She doesn't want Nana uh, to find out, yep. right? That's right. She doesn't want to be just another one of that guy's women because he's really famous. That's actually a different dynamic from what's happened here. And also, That's spoiler true. alert, she didn't, like, in Yamada-kun, she didn't sleep with him. Oh, wow, right. No, not surprising at all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is anime after all. I mean, there's yep. no sex is being had. Yep. Except I, in Nana and, like, one or two other shows. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think the best Yamada could do is just touch, um, touch her tail or, you know, like, the, the, her the stinger. stingers. Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the most action that you can hope for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, it is. It is. There's a little bit of, like, Nana-esque energy coming from Akane's character. Yeah. Which, which I like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I enjoy that as well. I think that... Um, that's solely the, the only thing that um uh, that I enjoy because of the Akane really impressive uh personality and um in, in, in that situation as well. Um I, I'm not sure it, it is something that I want to to watch more of though. Right. Yep, so I put it eight out of ten. Uh number four for me. Yep. The last of the four last four shows top four group. Yep. Yep reasonable and for me like the uh the the top five the first half is you know like um it must higher than the second half for me so my what do you my mean of this episode five no no sorry the uh so so up up the 10 show that we watch so my number one to 
to five, I, I enjoy it much greater than number six to ten. Oh, I see. You There's a big gap between how much you enjoyed yep. the episode. That's right, yeah. Yep. yeah, I would say there's a big gap between how much I enjoyed the first the two, two and the right. last eight. Yes. Yep. But that's usually that's usually how I end up feeling. Yep. Might I don't be, know, Orchestra might be. at third is like is crazy. Yeah. But uh, uh yeah, I I do I might actually watch more of that. All right. Just cuz like be... I thought it was going to be dumpster tier and it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, maybe if you try Oshinoko, maybe you like it. Who knows? So I mean, I hope I like it because everyone else on planet Earth likes it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I I hope I enjoy it. And I mean, I I typically find that um damn it what's the what studio is it all uh, right uh can i can't remember this no get, no get yes. yeah i usually like uh i mean i don't like all doga kobo shows in fact they produce a lot of stuff involving like really young female characters that i don't care for at all uh yep. but in general i think the studio is they put out pretty respectable work just in terms of you know the animation and uh, the mechanics of the the series they put out. The general direction. I think they have a good stable of of directors, ep- like episode yeah. directors who work there consistently. So yeah. I, I'm hoping I enjoy it. Yeah. Maybe I will. Yeah. Maybe I won't. I don't know. I mean, I don't really like Demon Slayer, and that's like the biggest anime ever. Oh, at man. least recently. Yep. Yep. I I I know what you mean. And um, yeah, I. The second season of um, Mahoshukai no Yume, it actually oh, yeah. be, be okay as well. So oh, you watched watch that episode? Watch. Yeah, I watched that episode. Uh, All right. It's set in high school. <laughs> no, it's not high school. It's the college. Oh, That's sorry, the call college. It. It's like yep. a magic academy. It's Harry yep. Harry Potter, basically. Yep, 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 yep. Set in my mind. <laughs> now graded. Upgraded. Yep. Now to college. Say upgraded to college. Yes. Yeah. Uh yeah, I don't I don't think I'm gonna be watching that. Okay. I mean the first se- I didn't even get through the first season. Like the by the oh, fourth or fifth really? time that she say like was there was a scene where she was underwater. Uh huh. You remember there kept being scenes where she would be like dropped into a lake or submerged in water like somehow. And then she would I, have like a little flashback or something that just kept happening over and over in the first season. <laughs> like they yep, had run so, out of ideas. All right, right. So, so the so the whole idea of uh, you know like she go she attending college, um, yep, it because she she want to avoid that to happen. Just think, just think of it like that. Oh, I see. <laughs> She's tired of getting uh, you know, like drowning in lakes. Yep. Just wants to go to a place where there's no water. So she, <laughs> she was new skills. Maybe right. maybe she she know how to swim, so that uh she could you know like <laughs> not drowning under the water anymore. Yeah, I uh famously that's where people go to learn how to swim is <laughs> magical <laughs> schools. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I mean if you don't want to actually learn how to swim and you just want to learn how to walk on water, I guess you could do that or how to freeze the surfaces of lakes like the dude from One Piece. Yep. Another One Piece reference. All right, time for my shameful confession. I have been watching One Piece. Wow, right. True story. And how is how is that going? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a, have you heard of One Pace? Yeah, Actually, yeah, we yeah, can yeah. just end the podcast here. Th- this has nothing to do with. All right, so cool. that concludes our current <laughs> podcast. And uh, yeah. If you want to listen, uh, if you want to know more about Cooper, you know, uh, journey with one one piece, one pace, uh, maybe just pop up in the comment, and you know, like we will we will share that information to you. But for now, it's a secret. Yeah, you gotta subscribe on Patreon, <laughs> and pay for that. Hundred dollars a month. <laughs> All right, uh, that's it for now, though. So we will see you guys back in a few months, I think. Yeah, you're you're going on a trip, and um, yep. we're going to be just generally talking about live action movies next couple times we meet up, which will be over mm-hmm. on Triple Cross Cinema, our other channel. 
Yep. But uh, some some Nana related videos are going to start showing up on Double Cross Anime pretty soon. Cool, cool. All right, all right. So 